So the UAE sees women's empowerment as part of its foreign policy posture as well as part of its national security strategy. It's not only a human rights issue or an economic empowerment issue, but it's also a political issue, not just in the region, but around the world. I think that's the first premise, and that's part of the reason the Dubai Women Establishment is leading on this uh, global forum that has brought some of the leading thinkers, practitioners, policymakers, and peacemakers from around the world, primarily women, to share best practice and share experience about how we go about the business of diplomacy diplomacy and de-escalation, uh, as well as economic empowerment, lifting up hundreds of millions out of poverty. I think that's a, a really key part of what we are doing here in Dubai, and it's due to the fantastic leadership in our country, uh, of course, that this is uh, such an essential part of our foreign policy posture. To the second part of your question, I think it's clear for us as the UAE, where we sit at the United Nations, where 193 countries sit and debate these peace and security issues around the day that women form part of the peace and security continuum, which is why, for example, the UAE is an avid supporter of the Women, Peace and Security Resolution 1325 that mandates the involvement of women in the peace and security architecture around the world in conflict. Today, unfortunately, less than 10% of women are sitting at the peacemaking table or are mediators or negotiator, negotiators in peace solutions. And I think you see that that correlates directly to the length of how long peace agreements last. So, for example, they would last uh, 35 years or longer if women are around the table. They are now lasting five years or less because women are not consistently around the table. So this so there's is a, a security imperative, not absolutely. just for the UAE, but globally. Absolutely. It's a security imperative today. Uh, not only is it the right thing to do, so it's a moral imperative, but it's the smart thing to do in terms of your foreign policy, to lift women up, empower women, not just in our part of the world, but around the world, to be part of that peace and security global architecture. I'll give you an example of how we're doing that, a real example. Peacekeepers uh, at the UN, you recognize them as blue helmets in some of the toughest conflict zones in the world. Uh, what was noticed that not enough women were coming up through the pipeline of peace and security um, uh, um, around the world in these conflict areas. So the UAE, through its military training academy in Abu Dhabi, is now training a new cohort of peace and security, uh, peacekeeping troops, police, judiciary, to come up and be part of that peace and security architecture. We trained over 140 last year. The cohort was 140. This year it's over 181, and not just from the Middle East region, but also from Asia and Africa. So that's really part of our global contribution uh, to women, peace and security and that agenda. When you think about this within the context of what's happening specifically in this region, we're talking about that peace plan that's been proposed by the president. When you looked at what was happening, His Excellency Yusuf Ateba was in the room at the White House, Benjamin Netanyahu, the president. Do you think that if there was a woman involved directly at the top, there could potentially be a deal? Is that what's lacking in this conversation? Well, that's a, a very binary question between women being there and not being there, but I think it's well, clear. Well, it's directly to your point, which is important in terms of dialing down the tensions in the region that women be involved. And at this point, they aren't involved at the very top in this conversation. In the UAE, women are involved at the very top. We're over a third of our cabinet are women, 50% uh, of our parliament are women. Uh, women ministers, women leading in stem cell research, women leading in space and putting our first astronaut into space was primarily uh, something that women were part of. So 70% of our university graduates are women. If you don't take from that pipeline uh, and contribute to your economy and your society, clearly that society isn't going to flourish. That includes regional peace and security. So I'm the UAE's first ambassador to the United Nations who is a woman. Um, but I am one of many countries who also have an uh, ambassador at the United Nations who is a woman, and it's their first time, and they come from Western countries. Um, we're now at about 50, so we're nowhere near parity. But today, I brought with me nine women ambassadors from the United Nations to see what we're doing from across the regions uh, here in Dubai as a potential uh, example of trying to accelerate that change for women's empowerment. And that includes in regional peace and security issues. Mm. When you look at the impact locally, it's quite impressive as well because the UAE is a standard setter here. But across the region, we were speaking before about how six of the ten countries that have the biggest gender gap in the world are right here in the MENA region. Mm. So why isn't that UAE influence rubbing off on other countries in this part of the world? Well, I think, you know, the model for, for development and growth here is never one that we say is the right one. In the same way that we don't want to adopt whole piece models from around the world and say this is right for us culturally uh, or politically or traditionally. So I think that's the first thing is that we offer our model humbly. We think we have a lot to learn ourselves and we're continuing to learn uh, those steps, which is what things like this forum do for us. 
So for example, I think everyone will walk away from this forum knowing that if women were equal today, as Kristalina said yesterday, we would unlock over $170 trillion into the global economy, of which $1 trillion would be released in the MENA region. Now those are really powerful figures to convince decision makers, policy makers, not just uh, in our region, but around the world that this is the right thing to do. When you think about what happens next more globally, uh, one of the statistics from the World Economic Forum is that it's going to take over 100 years, over a century, 108 years for women, uh, for gender equality globally. Is that daunting for you, or do you think that we're moving in the right direction quickly enough? Because we are talking about unlocking money at this point, mm -hmm. at a time when, frankly, here on CNBC, we talk every other week about the potential for a global recession, and particularly with regards to the coronavirus, everything that's happening in the world. Are we moving fast enough, do you think, to gender parity globally? I think what the Dubai Women Forum uh, policymakers here are saying uh, what Her Highness Sheikha Fatima in Abu Dhabi is saying with her promotion of women's rights around the country and around the region is no, we're not moving fast enough. And we'd like to be part of the change makers that make it move a little bit faster. 100 years is too long to wait for that gap to cl close naturally. But having said that, there's no one silver bullet to how to fix this structurally, economically, politically. It's different in every single different context. So I think the data is really important. The more that we fund uh, and provide our resources to analyzing the data, the more we convince policymakers of the direction that we're going in. Uh, and then again, accelerating the change through our foreign policies, which is really what we're doing here. If you look at our foreign aid strategy, one of the four pillars of our foreign aid strategy, and again, there are not many countries around the world that do this, is for gender empowerment around the world. So we have a gender-sensitive foreign aid strategy. We have a uh, foreign policy strategy that looks at gender empowerment as one of its core pillars. And I think the more and more countries that do that, that adopt that, uh, that follow some of the examples that we're sharing here, um, we will accelerate that change that we want to see happen. That also plays to what Ivanka Trump was speaking about yesterday with the WGDP initiative that she's really been spearheading, putting women's empowerment as a foreign policy priority for the United States. How important is that international cooperation between the UAE and the US and your other partners around the world working with these groups to achieve uh, gender balance and gender equality? Well, look, it's absolutely imperative. When someone like Ivanka Trump comes here, showcases what she's doing, showcases what US foreign policy at its best can look like, I think it also accelerates change, uh, not just internationally, but in our part of the world as well. So the partnerships are really important. Uh, the exchange of best practices, the exchange of ideas, the inspirational aspect of her leadership, I think was very clear yesterday uh, to all the people and all the women in the audience who are applauding her presence. Absolutely, Your Excellency, we're going to have to leave it there. Lots more to come, Maddie, throughout the day from the Global Women's Forum. A lot more focus, I think, on the power of influence and what that means, not just for this part of the world, but globally. Back to you.